Good day, everybody. Here, meteorologist Mark Molnar with your edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Northeastern. Let's take a look at what the model, particularly the GFS, is showing later next week towards May 20th and 21st. That is a tropical low here in the eastern coastline of Central America and into the Central Caribbean as this system wants to go to the north. And conditions are very favorable for this. Vertical wind shear drops to almost nothing. High sea surface temperatures well above average. Take a look at how this this run is pushing it towards Cuba. The previous run was up towards the central part of the Gulf of Mexico. But nevertheless, the trend is north. And what is going to happen with this system? Well, let's break it all down for you. I'll show you what I think is going to happen with it. And if you haven't watched my Hurricane 2022 Outlook, the link is in the description down below. Let's get into it. All right, so take a look at the tropical update trouble spot areas here. Now, May 13th through the 15th here, I still have this area that's now a open circle, so to speak, a less than 1% chance. This is what we were originally looking at, that stalled, really slow-moving low heading to the southwest. The window of opportunity to get this into anything is rapidly dwindling because it is going to be uh, moving onshore here in parts of Georgia and northern Florida in the next couple days. So I'll continue to watch it here. Stranger things have happened. That's why you never turn your back on these systems here. I am still watching that, so I have gotten quite a few messages of people still concerned about this area, and I'm going to continue to watch it here, but so far I don't see any major development happening out of that. But there's that area, May 18th through the 20th, and then onward beyond that. I have, you know, this is pretty far out, so I have a 1% to 3% chance, which is pretty significant this far out. I'm not willing to go beyond 3% at this point, but this area in this circled area in the Western Caribbean and into cent, uh, Central America here, I am very concerned about here. So let's break the rest of this down for you. All right, the high-resolution Euro, what is going on here? Well, we do have showers and thunderstorms activity here Thursday, May 19th, but the Euro just isn't grabbing onto it like the GFS is here. And you can see it brings most of the shower and thunderstorm activity that many people were warning further closer to the Pacific side. So... Yeah, we have to watch this. The GFS is definitely very bullish with this. So, yeah, we'll continue to watch it here, but the Euro just isn't on board yet. All right, let's take a look at the potential verticity here, relative verticity, in the upper levels of the atmosphere here. This gives us a good idea of spin in the upper levels. So here on the GFS, you can see there's quite, let's take a look at that. There's quite a bit of spin down here. This far south in the Caribbean, that's pretty rare. Take a look as we head, look at this. Uh, so, yeah, this has been trending a little bit further west. I am a little bit concerned that maybe this is going to, if this trend continues, this might become more of a Pacific side system. We'll have to watch and see here. But look at this. It really starts to take development here on this latest GFS run. And look how, wow, that's, uh, that's a lot of spin in the upper levels of the atmosphere here. So the atmosphere is primed for this. G we just have to see where the low pressure center is going to form and how that's going to respond and what the upper level steering currents are going to be at that time. So this is a pretty interesting uh, storm for this early in the season. We'll have to watch and see how this unfolds. Look at this. This is the GFS. Thanks to Tropical Tidbits. Take a look at this. This is the big scale, the whole Atlantic. There's that system developing there in the Western Caribbean. This is right around Sunday, uh, May 22nd, very early in the morning. So take a look at this as we go through this. Don't really focus on the point because it's way too far out. But if this system does develop, you know, it could develop into something probably the biggest we've seen so early in the season. Um, you know, this is getting, like I said, Saturday, May 28th. Yeah, um, not to alert you along the Gulf Coast, but, uh, you know, this is going to be a busy hurricane season for you. So you might want to start, you know, preparing, thinking about a hurricane plan. You know, it is early in the season, but... Stranger things have happened, especially the last 10, 15, even 20 years. Ever since the year of Katrina, things have been very, very interesting. As you can see here, this is the seven-day uh, sea surface temperature anomaly change. I wanted to bring this up because this system off the southeast coast has stirred up the colder waters, you can see. So it is going to have a little bit harder time developing. That's another reason why I'm not so keen on this system developing here anytime soon because, you know, it stirred up all this colder water. Now, you see this big change here in the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico? Yeah, this is where, this is the area we're going to be watching over the next several days, 7 to 10, maybe 11 days, for that potential development there in the western and if you take a look at the sea surface temperature anomalies here in the Gulf, 
Uh, this is not a change over the last seven days. This is, you know, year over year, climatology-wise. The Gulf is just on fire at this point. I mean, this is this is a spot we're going to be watching. And if this system in the Caribbean next week, later next week, into the following week, is able to develop and hold together, it could definitely strengthen more as it reaches the Gulf. Now, there's that area. Uh, this... This coastal low along these coasts has really stirred up that colder water, and comparing it to other years, it's definitely colder. So it's definitely stirred up that colder water, and don't see anything in the short term. This will warm back up, you know, in a couple weeks, but right now it's stirred up quite a bit of cold water. So I wanted to show you the NAM 3 kilometer. Let's look at that system here that's off the southeast coast here. So let's start from the beginning here, Thursday night into Friday. We got a few cells developing here offshore as well as onshore here in South Georgia. But as you can see, the moisture just really isn't there. It kind of tries to close off a low here Friday, uh, right before sunrise or right after sunrise there. But you can see there is a general circulation here. It's just not really filling in until later in the day you get the afternoon heating, as is typical with most systems. So you can kind of see, you can make out some sort of almost like circulation here. It's trying to close off again offshore, but... You can see it's just not closing the way I'd like to see it to close to actually see some sort of tropical system here. And you can see by Saturday, uh, the 14th here of May, it kind of pretty much washes out at this point. And some a product here I like to use on the NAM 3 kilometer is the simulated infrared satellite. You can take a look here as we head into Friday. You can see there's a lack of very close cold cloud tops, big thunderstorms in the upper levels of the atmosphere. You start to see a little bit of a spin-off here in exploding of storms here around the center. This is uh, just after sunrise, you know, 8, 9, 10 a.m. on Friday morning. You see these kind of get going, and they start to head towards the South Carolina coast later in the day. So that is pretty interesting here. So, you know, we'll watch this. There's a little bit of a fire here towards the center here uh, later in the day. But you can see there's just a little bit, you know, there's some wind shear here as well. This thing's battling. And then it, you can see it kind of slowly, you know, it tries to get its act together. But you can see most of this uh, thunderstorm activity is on the eastern side of this low here. All right, nationally, let's take a look at thunderstorms on land. Severe weather. This is for your Friday. Take a look. Stretching from basically the UP of Michigan here all the way down through. You can see with central Wisconsin, eastern Iowa, western Illinois, central Missouri, and into southeastern Kansas and northeastern Oklahoma. Yes, we are going to see damaging wind, large hail. Is there any chance of tornadoes? Less than 2%. That's great news. But we will have that hail threat. Look at that in the very large area. And the damaging wind, straight line wind threat, 15%. You betcha. So if we take a look at day three category outlook here for, this is heading into Saturday. Take a look eastern Kansas into northeastern Oklahoma, northwestern Arkansas, into southwestern part of Missouri. Now these marginal threats exist from western Texas all the way up to the UP of Michigan here. So take a look at that. That's a pretty large area. And if we take a look day four, day five, this is great news. You know, predictability too low. That's good. That's what you want to see from day four to eight. All right, take a look at a Friday here. Threat of severe thunderstorms does exist here into the central plains, into the upper Great Lakes, and eventually further southward as well. You can see here most of the day Friday with this low pressure system moving way up into central Canada but look at that we don't have explosive envelopment until later in the day here take a look and see that big old line developing here that is quite we'll have big clusters and big lines developing it'll be linear in nature throughout the day and we can see that is a dirty high down there in the southern plains dirty high you have strong thunderstorms developing around it that is not a very nice high pressure system there for you but you're still nevertheless getting thunderstorms uh, developing here in the southern plains let's actually take a look if we take a look at regionally here into the midwest we can see that line explode there onto your friday here so as we head there it is mostly in illinois and then look at that it kind of just kind of pops up and then you get these outflow boundaries where other thunderstorms develop so that's a real interesting pattern there. And look at this. We take a look at the northeast through your Friday. Look at that high pressures in control. That's beautiful weather. You might have a shower, a thunder shower there around Washington, D.C. And maybe something coming in here off the marine layer here in southern Jersey. But look at that. Most of the time we are staying pretty nice here across the northeast. We do have some pop-up showers and thunderstorms that do try to make their prevalence here. But, you know, there's less than a 10% chance in most of these areas. And we head towards Saturday. There is a better of a chance here as we head later in the afternoon 
on Saturday, especially in western New York, western Pennsylvania. Some of these cells could get a little strong, uh, wind gust to 40 miles per hour, maybe some pea-sized hail. But for the most part, it's mainly holding off. And if you take a look at total precipitation here on the NAM 3 kilometer, let's put that into motion, shall we? So, yeah, you kind of get the idea here. So, you know, the first part of the weekend, we do get some, maybe some showers, thunder showers here in southern Pennsylvania, southern New Jersey. For the most part, this isn't going to be a big all-day washout. But look at this. We head through the rest of the weekend into Sunday, and we get this coming from the west here. You can see the Michigan, Ohio, into western Pennsylvania, New York. And precipitation on the high-resolution Euro. Take a look at that. Heading on into Friday. So yeah, we're going to get some showers and maybe some thunder showers here from southern Pennsylvania, southern New Jersey, southward to Virginia. More so in Virginia here, parts of Maryland. And you can see that prevalence on Saturday morning. It tries to feed some showers and thunder showers up through New York and Pennsylvania. Thankfully, none of these are really severe. Uh, they're kind of like pop-up showers and thunderstorms. And you get a little bit over here in Ohio. Uh, from late Saturday into Sunday, and look at that. There's where we get more of a complex developing Sunday into Monday morning there, and then we start to get a more generalized shower showery pattern here across the northeast. So you'll pick up maybe up to an inch total over a three- to four-day period here. All right, so what's going on with the upper air here? Let's take a look at the medium-range model here, the climate model. So, yeah, we got that big old ridge across the northeast Friday into Saturday. That slowly heads into a trough. You knew that trough was heading for early next week across the northeast. So, yeah, we'll see a cool down in temperatures on average of 15 to 20 degrees below what you've been seeing. You've been well above average in the 80s in many areas into parts of the interior northeast. But look at this. This is a return to reality. So until next weekend, look at this Sunday, a big old ridge parks itself across the eastern part of the country. And this will be a precursor of any tropical development that does form into the Western Caribbean, into the Gulf. See if this ridge, you know, this might actually help pick it up on the west side of the ridge and bring it into the Gulf of Mexico. Big old trough developing out west here. On Monday, there's Tuesday, May 24th. So this trough here in kind of digging pretty far south here, south of the Rocky Mountains, and a ridge continues here into the east until we get to about Sunday, May 29th. Look at that, a big old trough, and things start to really break down here. The pattern becomes pretty stormy here across the east. So we head into Tuesday, June 7th. Look at that. Definitely looking troughy here in the east as a big old ridge develops out west and look at that monday june 13th that does not look very good there across the east coast all right take a look at this john sending in some nice photos from hicksville new york take a look at this back through may 9th through may 12th here temperature 81 degrees take a look at this beautiful blue skies here in the background look at this beautiful day here he captured and let's take a look through the rest of the photos here as well and there's the Hicksville sign, and look at that. You can see the beautiful blue skies behind that. Not a drop of rain or a cloud in the sky here. And take a look at this. School's still in session here as well, but take a look. That sun on the pavement, making it very nice and toasty. 81 degrees, so definitely pretty warm for this time of year. Nice captures there, John. All right, let's take a look at TGIF across the northeast. Take a look at this. Yeah, we have some showers and maybe some thunder showers developing across southern Pennsylvania, Delmarva, New Jersey, parts of Long Island, and into uh, Maryland and Virginia here. So, yeah, we could have, you know, the chance, maybe a tenth to a quarter of inch on average here, uh, especially late afternoon, early evening here into Friday. This will keep the temperatures down into the lower 70s, even 63 only here in Atlantic City, 70 in New York and D.C., 73 there in Boston. Might have a few showers out here on Cape Cod, too. This is that strung out area of low pressure with associated coastal low that's still plaguing us here. But look at this, Bangor, 85, 84 in uh, Binghamton here, as well as Albany. So yeah, the warmer air continues to be to the north here. The winter actually is 87 here in Burlington, Vermont. Look at that, the warmest spot. So yeah, we head into Saturday here. That front slowly pivots to the northwest here. We have a focal point of some showers and thunderstorms here. Uh, maybe up to a quarter to a half an inch in some of these showers and thunderstorms. These are not going to be severe, though. We have widespread 30 to 50% chance here into the light green. Uh, but we still get pretty toasty inland here. We're warming temperatures. Even along the coast here, we'll start to get towards the 70s. 82 there in Boston. So 
The warm spot, ironically, is going to go to Bangor May 90. We'll be pushing 90 up here, 80 in Binghamton, 83 in Albany, 79 in Pittsburgh. And we'll hold it down a little bit, as I said, 68 in Atlantic City, 71 in New New York, 77 there. Double sevens in both Harrisburg and D.C. And then we head into your Sunday. Yep, that front to the west combines forces here with the coastal front. And we'll get showers and thunderstorms likely here into the the moderate green here. So, yeah, we'll be looking at probably a quarter to a half an inch on average here um, through most of this area. Temperatures, one more day, we'll get up into the 80s here in parts of interior New York and Pennsylvania. All right, for the southeast, for your Friday TGIF, take a look at this. Yeah, it's a bit stormy. We still have that coastal low, but it's slowly being absorbed into this front, so that's probably some pretty good news here. So that's probably, at this point, not looking like this is going to be subtropical storm. Alex... Uh, but we do have some rainfall up here into the Carolinas. And we also have some severe weather west of Dallas-Fort Worth here. The big story, though, is going to be the heat building, though. Look at this, 90s, 97 there in Dallas, 92 in Houston, uh, mid to high 80s here in Florida. We will have, you know, half to three quarters of an inch of rain here over the Carolinas and into parts of Virginia. But this front, for the most part, around New Orleans will be mostly moisture starved. We might have some pop-up showers and thunderstorms throughout the afternoon and early evening into Saturday. We get much hotter, near 100 there in Dallas, Houston 96. And that front slowly moves inland and pushes most of the moisture uh, towards the front that's to the north up over the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. You can see here severe weather here just off the screen, parts of northern Arkansas into Missouri. But the big story will be these temperatures will slowly continue to warm it here. 87 in Birmingham, 88 in Nashville, and 85 there in Atlanta. And then for your Sunday, take a look at this. This is not much of too much of a cold front because look at this. 101 there in Dallas, 97 in Houston, 89 in New Orleans, 93 in Tampa, 88 up there in Raleigh, and 83 in Norfolk, so even Roanoke, 86. So yeah, we're spreading this heat and humidity to the northeast pretty rapidly. Extended a look for my hometown viewers, Bingham to Descranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley. Take a look Friday through Tuesday here. Friday, we're starting off real nice, sunny, and 84 if you have the nice day off. Enjoy it. Double nickels to start out, 5-5, five, five. and then Saturday. Look at that. Showers and thunderstorms potentially moving in in the afternoon. So it's not going to be an all-day event, so don't plan your entire day around canceling everything, but just be aware there may be some stray showers and thunderstorms. And then as well as into Sunday, to a better chance of showers and thunderstorms. I mean, we're not looking at a massive severe weather outbreak here, but some of these stronger storms could contain wind gusts of 40, 45 miles per hour, maybe some pea-sized hail. So you want to watch out for that. Heading up towards 82, but look at that Monday. We cool it down a bit here. We're getting that so rain showers most of the day. So Monday will be kind of a washout. And then Tuesday, we warm it up to only 67. Nice sunny skies, but this is more closer to your average for this time of year. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern. Go over to my social media pages. Uh, it's Twitter at Weather Eastern. Also, Media Mark on Facebook, as well as Weather Northeastern on Facebook and Hurricane Northeastern on Facebook for hurricane lovers here wanting to watch my tropical updates in between videos. And don't forget, there's a link in the description down below the video here of my Hurricane 2022 outlook if you have not watched it. Thank you for watching and supporting me here.